<clears throat> Hi guys, um, I pray that you are well. Today I'm going to be speaking from uh, James 3.14 because that's what the Lord spoke to me this morning. And so I'm just going to be obedient and flow um, however the Holy Spirit wants me to flow in this. Um, God, please just tell me even how to approach this. Okay, so James 3, 14 says, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder in every, every evil practice. Okay, so the Lord is highlighting jealousy and envy, okay? And my heart aches, Ooh, my heart just aches for those of you who are operating under jealousy and who are operating under envy, okay? Jealousy and envy is one of the most uh, destructive and sneaky spirits that can creep up on you, okay? It is an instant, it's, the, it's, it's a quick way to allow the enemy to control you and to have you tear down God's kingdom, okay? And so what the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying that you, whoever, when you see someone and you hear them speak with wisdom, okay? And you see them possess, it, it, it doesn't even have to be earthly things. You can see them possess characteristics, okay? It could be their outward beauty. It could be their inward beauty. It could be their favor amongst men. It could be who their husband is, whatever it is, okay? If you see light in someone, And what, and, and what you see, if it irritates you and you feel jealousy rising up on you, the Lord says to cast it down immediately. He says, come before me and pray to me, your father, okay? Because your father sees everything that is done in secret, okay? He knows your thoughts. He knows your heart. Okay, and some of you have been in positions where you can help people, okay? And you have not done so because you are operating out of jealousy, out of envy, and out of selfish ambition. And in that very moment, you don't even realize it, but you partner with the enemy and you tear down God's kingdom. And when you do that, you immediately become an enemy to God. He's saying that when you see someone with the glory of God over their life, with favor in different aspects of their life. He says, understand that I have given them that favor for my purpose and for my glory, okay? When Esther was brought before the king, okay? And the king chose her out of every version. When he chose her to be his wife among all women, when she found favor amongst the Enochs who were helping all of the women prepare, when she found favor amongst the king, that wasn't for her glory. That wasn't for her. That was because God was using her to free and save all of the Jews. Okay? So if you had been one of them women that saw Esther... 
and you tried to blackmail her, you tried to destroy her, you tried to talk about her, you tried to make it a point to go against everything that she is saying, you are now becoming an enemy to God and no good thing will come into your life as long as you are operating under that, okay? And he says that you, when you do that, there are some people, and this is, he's speaking about people in ministry. He's speaking about, uh, in general, okay? <laughs> when you see a woman of God speaking the truth and having wisdom, okay? Jealousy will make you shift your focus in focusing on what God wants you to do and what God wants you to say and the purpose over your life. Jealousy will make your sole purpose investigating and just trying to destroy that woman. Jealousy will make you try to investigate and refute and research and refute everything that that person is saying. And the Lord is saying that then you are refuting my truth. You are denying my truth. You have allowed your jealousy and your envy and your selfish ambition to deny the Lord's truth. And in that very moment, you are on a fast highway to hell. In that moment, you are choosing the enemy as your father. And before you know it, you have destroyed and you have contaminated everything around you and you have acted as a soldier for the enemy because not only in your jealousy is bringing this person down not only are you tearing down what God is trying to do in their life you're misleading other people around you it's not about you it's not even about the person that you're jealous of it's about the Lord and what he is doing My God, it's not about you. And my heart aches because the Lord is saying that this jealousy and this envy that you or people that are working against you are operating under is only because you don't know who you are. Why be jealous of something that you can access? The glory of God is accessible to you. He says, know who you are, daughter. Come to my secret place. And when you find yourself, when you feel jealousy rising up in you, go to your father and say, Father, I rebuke the spirit of jealousy and envy and selfish ambition in the name of Jesus. And then ask God, say, God, how can I serve what you are doing in that person's life? Action. Action. Some of you... And, and God is forgiving you in this hour, but he needs you to repent. And your repentance has to come from action. Your repentance has to come from restoring whatever you allow the enemy to let you destroy at the hand of not knowing who God has called you to be. He says, whoever you tore down, out of jealousy, out of envy, out of selfish ambition, whoever you did not promote, out of jealousy, out of envy, out of selfish ambition. He says, ask 
me, the father, as the father, what you can do in that person's life. Mm-hmm. That jealousy and that envy and that selfish ambition contaminates organizations, contaminates families, is lethal. That's why you have whole churches. You have whole organizations, whole businesses, ineffective or distracted by gossip, by slander, by false accusations, by scornful speech. The Lord says, turn away from it. He says, seek me, daughter, because I love you. And if you only knew If you only knew who you were, if you only knew how beautiful I believe that you are, if you only knew what I had in store for you on the other side, you're trying to be jealous of the person that God is sending in your life to take you to the next level that God is sending in your life to free you, okay? And in James 3, this this is part, the, this section in James 3 is two sections. One is, the first one is taming of the tongue and the second one is two kinds of wisdom, okay? Some of you, out of jealousy, out of envy, out of selfish ambition, has used your tongue to tear down someone else. And I understand that you don't know how powerful you are, but God is saying you are powerful and what you speak out of your mouth has the power of life or death. James 3, 5, he says, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. The Lord says that it is no small matter. All of this, I just said it because I was mad. I that they can get over it. I just did it. No. It is a it's it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. Speak life. Speak life. The Lord says this is the wrong hour to try to be partnering with the devil. And the thing about jealousy and envy and selfish ambition, you don't even realize you're partnering with the devil. Okay? Okay. But this is the wrong time because in this hour, the Lord is shifting influence to people who have been obedient to him, to people that have served him. And everyone that has been operating like this out of selfish ambition, who think that the Lord brought them to their position for their own glory, to pacify their own insecurities, to make them find worth in anything else outside of God. He says those people are going to be brought down. The days of those people 
uh, ruling for 20 and 30 and all of these years. People think they got away with stuff. Just watch, he says. Just watch, they will be destroyed. And it's one thing when a person destroys you. Do you know it's a whole nother thing when God decides to destroy you? To not fear God is to not know God. And he says, when you speak against somebody that I, the Lord, have called, you now become an enemy to not that person, but to the Lord and to the kingdom of God. Pray that the Lord frees you because this is not a video that is, uh, the Lord is not speaking this out of a place of just condemnation. He's speaking it from a place of love because at the heart of the matter, You don't know who you are. At the heart of the matter, you're searching for value in other things outside of the Lord. You're searching for affirmation. From anyone outside of the Lord. And for those of you who are called to ministry, he says, in this hour, I need you to have the spirit of John the Baptist, my Lord. He says, I need you to have the spirit of John the Baptist, okay? When Jesus came, John the Baptist had all the clout. However, John the Baptist did not have selfish ambition. He didn't have jealousy. He didn't have envy. So he said he paved the way for Jesus. And because he paved the way for Jesus, he was given the greatest honor. He was given the greatest honor. He was given the honor of baptizing the Messiah. Are you kidding me? Baptizing Jesus? He was given the greatest honor. Jesus Christ himself called John the Baptist the greatest born amongst women. So he honored Jesus and Jesus turned around and honored him back. He didn't deny the truth. It's not about us. This shell it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the God that we serve and what he is trying to do in this earth. Okay? So I pray that this frees somebody. I really do. I really do. I pray that it frees you. For those who have been suffering at the hand of jealousy and envy from other people. And for those of you who have allowed the enemy to manipulate you through jealousy, envy, and selfish ambition, I pray that God will reveal to you his truth. I pray that he will reveal his glory. I pray that he will reveal to you a new dimension of who he is in a new dimension of who you are 
in him. Okay? There's no shortage of God's glory. It is not a lack mindset, okay? God is not a God of lack. He has enough love and blessings to pour amongst everyone. 